Shane Lowry, thank you for joining the uh, Smiley Show. I mean, I I will say I think you're probably one of my favorite players on the PGA Tour to play with. Always just such a joy to play with. And uh, Shane, you're joining us down from uh, Jupiter the week of Honda. Uh, and I'm I'm being told right as you walked into this uh, conversation that you were full dad mode this entire week. I was well. I um. I actually, I was quite busy. My wife's been away the last couple of days, uh, so I've been holding the fort here at home, and she's actually arriving home tonight, so I've been running around for the last hour trying to get the house clean <laughs> to, oh. to make it presentable for her. And uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's been nice, but it's been busy. I'm like, poof, uh, stay at home, Dad. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's great and all, but I'm not sure it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a grind, man. It's an absolute grind. Uh, it makes us makes us appreciate our our wives on on how incredible they are Absolutely, with their children, yeah. especially my wife, who's currently giving my daughter a bottle as we speak. So it's it sure is nice to to uh, have that that type of teammates. And and Shane, you have two daughters, am I right? I do. You yeah, have two girls, six and two. So um, yeah, it's. We've had a great time the last few days, uh, but yeah, I mean, just the early mornings and <laughs> the constant going, um, yeah, I certainly got a good appreciation for what it, my wife goes through day to day. Uh, um, is your yeah. is your oldest fancy golf or no? She gets a lesson once a week. She goes with her one of her best friends, yeah, so uh, they go and they go to the diet preserve out here uh, down in Jupiter, and uh, yeah, they love it to go Tuesday after school, and I went for the first time a couple of weeks ago and I didn't really like, I kind of set on and looked from afar, but uh, I liked what they were doing. You know, he seemed to be disciplining them, you know, they were doing what they were told. And <laughs> she, she actually could hit it, which I was pretty impressed by. Um, Amazing. But she can kind of, she's, she's so busy doing everything. I mean, kids, oh. you'll see it in a few years when they grow up. I mean, they just, every day after school, there's an activity on and golf is one of those. So, um, yeah, she she actually hasn't asked me to go out and play yet. She hasn't really said to me, Dad, can I go play golf with GF? Uh, I've brought her out a couple of times and she prefers like the halfway house and all the <laughs> snacks. That's kind of, that's her favorite part of the day. Why wouldn't it be? You know, that's where all the... Well, it's probably my favorite part of the day as well, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> that's incredible. And, and that's the cool thing about you know, kids in general, especially when they have, um, a famous dad and a, and a famous athlete like yourself, who is as good in the world at what they do in their craft. And, you know, she's not, she's not ready to play with, with dad yet. She just, you know, uh, she'll get there one day. You know, one of her friends, she will hopefully one day, but, uh, I wouldn't push her into it. She can do whatever she likes. That's amazing. And, you know, we were just at this Rickson shoot in LA and I was talking with uh, Michael Jolly while you were doing something with one of the shoots. And he was like, did you know uh, that Shane's dad is a, a famous rugby player? And I was like, is is that right? Because I, I Googled. No, it's uh, Gaelic football. Well, so so it's like what, an Irish football. Okay. So what is that? It looks like rugby when I looked at it on YouTube. Get, just give me the, <laughs> give me the 411 it's, on all this. Uh... <laughs> It's kind of a cross between soccer and rugby. Okay. All right. See, so this is all new to me. Uh, so you're gonna have to explain this. It's not. So it's it's a field. So the field is basically the field is 150 yard yards long. Say. Okay. Um, and it's pretty the same width as like a football field, NFL field. Yeah. Um, and it's got a soccer goals, <laughs> but with an NFL post. Um, I was so confused like yeah. on YouTube. I was like, what? this looks like rugby. They just kicked it up in the air through the field goal thing. So I, I figured that was it. And there's like 15 players on 15. It's a fully amateur sport. Uh, they don't get paid. Uh, and like, I think that's what's the, the amazing thing about it is you play for the team wherever you're born. So like wherever oh. you're born, that's the team you play for. Okay. Um, so it's kind of, you know, uh, that's what's great about it as well. And uh, yeah, like, you know, the finals are on every used to be September. It's in like early August. Now you get 82,000 people there at the finals. It's, it's a, it's it's a pretty a, big deal. All amateur. Home, yeah. Wow. Okay. All amateur. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they don't get paid and, uh, you know, some might say they should. Um, I, I think it's like, a, honestly, it's a full-time job. You should see what they, like, I, I know a few of the players that play and, uh, I keep a close eye on it. Like only this past weekend, I was watching some games, um, and watching my team play and, uh yeah, I don't know how they do it to be honest, because they they work a full time job and they train five nights a week and then they play a game at the weekend. It's, oh my God. it's yeah, it's uh, 
it's incredible what they do and and you know at the end of the like not many of them obviously the team that wins the championship at the end of the year it's huge for them but the other guys are just struggling along at the lower levels uh they still train as hard as the guys at the top so yeah so my dad yeah sorry that's a long-winded way of putting it but my dad won an all all Ireland, which is a cha- national championship in 1982. Yeah, uh, he was on the All Star team in '81. Uh, so yeah, and and it, not only um, his two brothers were on the team with him as well. That won the game. I won that game, and it's also it's like one of the most famous games that's ever been played because it's like uh, my team is from is Offaly. Uh, that's where I'm from, yeah. and we were playing against Kerry, uh, which is placed down the southwest of Ireland. Um, and they're the they're the best best team of all time, and they were on their way to winning five in a row. And oh, my wow. dad's team beat them for five in a row. So yeah, it oh, was a very man. famous game. So uh, are they are there like positions in this? I'm because I need to go watch. Yeah, film. so I need, like I need to go watch goal, the tape. <laughs> a goalkeeper. There's 15 players on 15. So there's a goalkeeper. Then there's six backs, two two midfielders are called, and there's six forwards. Okay. And uh, I mean, the game's changed a lot over the years. The players are a lot fitter now. They're they run a lot more. The positions are kind of gone out of it a little bit. It used to be that you you got your position. You know, like say a corner forward is where my dad used to play, and he he would have to stay down in the corner when the mm. ball came into him. That's when he got it. Um, but now they kind of roam around the place, and they just kind of it's a bit of a it's gone. It's very tactical now. Yeah. And Shane, there's no way that, like, I imagine that you had to have grown up playing this game. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I, I loved it, to be honest. I played, I played, uh, I played all sports, really, but I played up until I was about 17 or 18. Um, so I played quite, quite wow. long. And, uh, what yeah, position? I, I loved it. I played corner forward like my dad. Oh, of so, course. Corner forward, you don't have to move that I much. was about to say, right? <laughs> it seemed like that was the guy that doesn't have to go quite as much. The <laughs> midfielders are the guys you do not want to be. <laughs> Midfielders are the ones are the backs where you have to like track around and run after people. Uh, that wasn't me, but I was pretty good when I got the ball. I could score. I was well able to score, so I was like talented that way. But uh, yeah, thankfully I found golf. <laughs> yeah, how do you score? So w- what is the scoring system for it? So there's a uh, the goals, which is like a soccer goals, yeah. um, and then there's like a post, like a, mm-hmm. a football post, right? And you get three three for putting it in the net, three points. And you get one point for kicking it over between the posts. Yeah, because there's nobody guarding uh, the, the post, just, but yeah. there's a keeper guarding yeah. the like yeah. a normal soccer goal. And yeah. can you can you just throw it on the ground? Can you run like? <laughs> no, so you you catch it and you kick it, and you, you you're only allowed to take four steps. Four steps with it in your hands, and then you've got to. It's called you play it. So you can either you can kind of kick it. It's called a solo. You kick it to yourself. Oh, which is like a yeah. It's, so you throw you know, it on the ground, kick under, it up, and and keep running. No, you just throw it onto your foot and kick it up. Yeah, and, and that's it resets you. the clock, yeah. and then you can go do that. That's you get four seconds again. Yeah, but it's it's full. It's like a seventy minute game, thirty five each half. Okay, <laughs> and it's it's full on. Yeah. Is there any other like Ireland golfers that are that I would know of that grew up playing oh, this yeah. game? So like uh, Paul McGinley played at a decent level. Okay. Uh, Harrington played at a good level. Paul Harrington's father won an All Ireland medal too. Really. Yeah, um, for Cork. Um, yeah, they're the two I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, Gaelic football. I, I, I wrote it down thinking because I watched the video. It was like this dude just kicked it through the uprights. It's got to be rugby. Yeah. And <laughs> but I wrote yeah. that down. I was thinking like I. It said Irish football. You're, you're going. You're going on a golf trip, aren't you, to Ireland? Oh yeah, yeah. That's we're about to get into that, and so I, well, we might as well get you into that right now. Should try and get a game in. What's that? You try and go. You should try and go to a game when you're there. Oh man, you think I'm ready for that? Oh yeah, <laughs> Hugh Guinness, Hugh Guinness, go to a game. Why not? Oh boy, man, um, I I would love to. I, I'm a big big sports fan. Doesn't matter where it is. I'm I'm a I'm a guy that if you just get me to a game, just let me bet on the home team and let me bet on the over. And yeah, if you just yeah. find me a couple of beers, then I'm gonna have a great time. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. that sounds like a great day. <laughs> and and you grow up in all right. So is it Count Offaly? County Offaly. County yeah. Offaly. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of right in the middle of Ireland, correct? Yeah, right in the middle. It's about an hour. It's about sort of 60 miles west of Dublin. And yeah. when did you get started in the game then? Because it sounded like you were playing, uh, you, you mentioned all sports, but uh, it sounded like Gaelic football mm. seemed to be a little bit of your focus for quite a while, huh? 
Yeah, um, I, I like my family didn't pl- really play. A few of my uncles played, but um, I start I start playing golf. Like I got a club in my hand maybe when I was nine or ten, and but I didn't really play then until I was about twelve. Um, uh, they built a, a golf course that I grew up on. They built that about five miles from my house in nineteen ninety seven. So oh I was wow! 10 in ninety seven, so like uh, what's the course? It's a place called Esker Hills. Uh, okay. So it's right in the middle, yeah, uh, just outside a place called Tullamore. Um, so they, yeah, they built that, and then I just said to my dad one day that I want to go play golf, and he was looking at me weirdly, like, "Why would you want to go play golf? <laughs> Who plays golf?" So um, <laughs> I think he's pretty happy with that decision now. Yeah, but, you'd say, um, huh? went out and to be honest I just fell in love with the game straight away uh, like from the age of 12 or 13 like it's all I did all day every day any any minute I got I remember even when I got like later in my teenage years and when my friends were going out to party and stuff like I just wouldn't go with them on a Friday or Saturday night and I just stay in so I could go play 36 holes the following day wow. and I just loved it yeah that was it and you mainly just played at Esker Hills growing up I did, yeah, and then as I got older, obviously I, I played and started playing in tournaments and moving around the country a little bit. And right, we were very fortunate in Ireland; like we got some very big tournaments on some great golf courses, and um, yeah, I played all those growing up. So, uh, like, learned my golf really on Parkland golf, but obviously I played a lot of links golf in tournaments as, as I got older. So Parkland golf, explain to me what that is. I'm, I'm Parkland is like like U.S. golf, like like we okay. were, you know, tree line course. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You okay. know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And I was, uh, I, I, I had forgotten that you had won the Irish uh, Open as an amateur, correct? And that yeah. was in like 2009 against Robert Rock, who had the best head of lettuce on his hair. Still does. Still does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take uh, me back to 2009 in that moment. Cause I mean, we just recently watched Nick Dunlap win at the American yeah. express. You had to kind of think to yourself that that kind of brings back a little bit of memories. I know it's not a different, different setting and it's your homes home state, but yeah, still pretty cool. It, right. It, yeah. It, it, it did bring back some memories and, um, like I remember in so in two thousand nine, I, I was quite fortunate at the time I came around. I remember, so I was around the time of Rory. Like Rory's a couple of years younger than me, but he was always a couple of years ahead of me, a few years ahead of me when it came to like the tournaments and mm-hmm. stuff back home. But Rory is obviously the best player, best amateur in Ireland at the time, and I was kind of in behind him, in the pack behind him. And uh, I remember amateur golf just became so big back home, and mm. we go out and play tournaments, and there'd be like you know, a thousand people out walking the fairways watching the golf and and then when Rory turned pro I kinda there's a few of us just took it over from there and I suppose early two thousand nine I was one of the best amateurs in Ireland. I was after winning a lot of tournaments and uh I asked the, I asked the golf union for an invite to the Irish Open because they they used to give them out and then they stopped giving them out for a year or two and, and I just had never played so I, I just wanted to play. Uh, so I called them up one day like in about I'd say February or March and I was like is there any chance I can play the Irish Open? And they were like, got yeah, back to me and they're like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> and I went to a place called Baltre, which is where it was that week. I remember I was just happy to be there. And wow. it was my first ever professional event <laughs> playing on the European Tour. I was just like, oh my God, we're like, what's this? And I opened up, I shot uh, five under the first round and 10 under the second round. What? I was leading by, leading by two going into the weekend. I was like, this is just, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. And then obviously I went on to win and, like in, incredible how much that kickstarted my career. I obviously got my card in Europe. I turned pro straight away. Oh yeah! So I remember when Nick when Nick Dunlop a couple of weeks ago when he when people were talking about him whether he's going to turn pro or not. I was like, I if he was thinking about not turning pro, I'd just like to talk to him for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he did. So um, you know, and even like you know, I've I've watched a little bit of him as as he started off, and it's not going to be all plain sailing. I think. I was kind of maybe at the time I thought, yeah, this is going to be pretty straightforward. But um, you realize when you go on tour, it's it's not as easy as you thought it was going to be. And you just need to trust yourself and believe in what you're doing is right and keep going. 
Yeah, and I think that's going to be great advice. Nick's a hell of a player, and it's going to, he's going to figure it out. I mean, he's obviously has already won on the PGA Tour at a young age, but still, like you said, it's there's so much that goes into learning all these new golf courses and playing against the best in the world, which he's he's got the talent for it. So I'll be looking out for see what Nick can do. And, and Shane, f- from watching you over the years, I still – think that you probably have some of the best set of hands i've ever seen around the greens just you're just lethal chipping and um you know is do you credit that to where you grew up is that something about the golf course you played growing up at esker hills is there something about that place or did you just come kind of naturally to you yeah so like growing up i never really got many lessons if any lessons at all really i met my coach when i was 17 um and he was probably the first coach I've ever had. So before that, I like we didn't have a, a driving range or a putting green or a short game area at the golf course I grew up at. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just a golf course and that was it. So you used to just go play. And I remember when I spent the, the evenings and the days I spent on my own at the golf course, I would uh, go out and just chip around the greens. And when I when I think back, and, and I've talked about this like over the years, um, there's a lot of like raised greens with runoffs around the course that I grew up at and you needed to be able to kind of hit the ball high flop shots you know have some decent hands to be able to hit the shots and and I think I do credit that somewhat for you know the hands that that I got because um like I can't actually emphasize or stress how many hours I spent out there just doing it and I was only I wasn't doing it to practice I was just doing it because I loved doing it and I didn't want to do anything else um and yeah i just that that's what i did every day i i'd play and i'd go out and i i if the course was quiet i'd find a, a green that was you know nobody around and mm-hmm. the green keepers couldn't find me because <laughs> if they see me they wouldn't be happy but uh, yeah i just spend <laughs> spend hours out there and trying to hit different shots and spin it back and do all that type of stuff was yeah it was pretty cool oh man cool. see i I, up, I, I did the same I, I grew up and uh i fell in love with the wedge you know it just was my always my favorite club in the bag i would love go late in the evenings and do exactly what you're just talking about and just hit all the fun shots uh the trick shots the ones that uh you know personally i I, I was I became a good ball striker, but it kind of took a while. So I actually found myself in all of these funny different places, which I'm sure you did as well um, over the years, especially especially playing up in those windy conditions in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, and and like I still do it now. Like I still, it's something that I love doing. Is I'm very fortunate where I live here. Mm. Um, I'm a member of two amazing golf courses, and uh, like I go to the short game area at the Bears Club, you, you won't find a better place in the world. And, Mm-mm. I'd spend so all day around there. It's 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 the best, and yeah, just hitting different shots and fun shots, and uh, yeah, like look, I, I and I've got good hands. Um, my stats are not as good as I would like, but uh, they can always get better. But I do feel like I've turned. I had a bad year last year, kind of around the greens, and I think that that held me back a little bit. But I think this year I found something that I'm pretty happy with, and I'm very excited for the few months I have ahead. And it's funny. I already know what that is, though, because we've done like three Strixon things on this. <laughs> so I might as well just say what it is. You've you have uh, changed your wedge setup. You've gone to uh, I believe it's a, is it a 59 degree that you have and then a 55 yeah. and a 51. One. Ah, yeah. I see. It's so just I'm like that. a wedge. But yeah, <laughs> but it's it, yeah. So that's given me a lot of options. And and also I've uh I just figured something out with my chip and that, uh, yeah, it's, Ooh, tell it's, me. it's please, very simple. Please it's, it's just, tell me. it's just all for me. Um, my, when my rhythm gets off, my technique gets bad. Not my technique, my shots get bad. And I just, and I just need to give myself time to hit the ball. So if you look at me when I chip, I look like I've got a long, slow yes. swing and mm-hmm. I all, I look like I'm deselling on it, mm-hmm. but that's what I need to feel to, to strike the ball correctly. And, I mean, my short game has been pretty good this year. It's felt really good. And, uh, yeah, and it, and do you know what that came from? That didn't come from a lesson off my coach. It didn't come from anything other than me spending some time on my own around the chip and green mm-hmm. at the Bears Club and figuring it out for myself. Yeah, that'll do it, especially around those grainy lies that uh, that yeah. you're going to have out there. I, this is the time of the year where my chipping is just, you know, we're just going to hit hit the omit button till till about April or May comes around and that that dormant Bermuda gets away. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I, I actually, do you know what? It's funny when I moved down here first, I hated playing uh, Florida golf, like the grainy lies mm. and all that. But living here now, 
I actually love it. It's my favorite stretch of the year. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, like I think I think the next three weeks of tournaments are some of the toughest golf that we play all year, but it's probably my favorite stretch of golf. I love playing Florida golf now. <laughs> it's it's definitely difficult, especially Bay Hill just continues to get more difficult every single year I show up there. It's the rough gets longer, the greens get firmer, there's no friction on the greens, and you're just like, well, okay, <laughs> there's nowhere to miss it. Yeah, you, you get there on Tuesday and, and you play the practice round and you can't stop the ball in the first three. You're like, oh, this is going to be a great week. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, Bay Hill is brutal and um, I keep trying to figure out how to play. I haven't learned how to play that place yet, so hopefully this year is the start of it. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's not easy. I know that. And so, Shane, before we kind of uh, I, before we get out of the Ireland talk, I just wanted to for you. I mean, you're you're a guy that's been, I'm sure, everywhere in Ireland. I want you to build me the perfect Ireland golf trip. And oh, we have a map oh. here that just oh, popped yes. up on our little screen that. Uh, I, I just want you to just, you know, if it's a region or if it's something that's like, all right, if it's, if I had five golf courses to play, um, five. this is how I would plan out the trip and we can kind of zoom in on whatever area you want to go to. No, I, I, uh, so I, I know exactly what I do if I was picking the perfect golf trip. I'd, I'd obviously land in Dublin. Okay. Um, and I'd play Port Marna. Yep. Uh, that's like right Port next Marna. to the airport, right? Right next to the airport. That's like, you could probably play that on the day you landed because you'd be fine if fly, you fly overnight yep. and you'll sleep. And yeah, that's, and then I would stay the night in Dublin because Dublin's one of the greatest cities in the world. Uh, Love that. Try sample, sample a few Guinness and I get in the car the next morning and I drive southwest. Southwest, okay. Towards, towards Adair Manor. Yep. I see, see Adair, Adair Manor there. right there. I'd play there that day. Okay. Um, and then... What's your thoughts on a Dare Manor? Because it's, it's not anything like... It's not a Lynx course, it's, it, but it's like... like For Ireland, it's like... You, you can't believe how well manicured it is. It's only like... A, it, it's got similar grasses to Augusta. Um, similar condition. It's... Uh, yeah, it's one of my... It's my favorite place to play golf in Ireland, to be honest. Yeah. One of, like, I've probably got, it's in my top three anyway. That's where the Big Manus, uh, JP Big Manus program is? Yeah, Big Manus program is there. Yeah, JP uh, bought it a few years ago and, and refurbished the whole place. And the hotel is incredible as well. So, um, I don't know if you want to spend a night in the hotel there, but yeah, if we're, <laughs> if we're just talking about golf. Um, no. So, from there, I would actually go to Tralee. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, west. It's still that not southwest. In, yeah, that course is incredible. What's cool um, about it? Just, I mean, it's got to be just links then. Um, it's links. It's, I think Arnold Palmer designed it, and oh. it's, uh, yeah, the back nine is the one of the best nine holes of golf you'll ever play. It's just incredible. It's like it's just, it's like it's just Arnold Palmer arrived there and it was already there, and he just kind of had to put his name to it. It's just like, it's like it just kind of, it's just yeah, perfect. It's, yeah. And then I would go, um, so that's three courses. So you want two more? Yeah, I, I, would go, I want two more. Stay, Killarney, Killarney's a great town if you want to stay in Killarney. It's, uh, Where's see, that it's one? It's further south. It's kind of inland further south. There you uh, go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great town. And that's about an hour from a place called Waterville. Yep. Which is one of the best golf courses in the world. And that's right near Hogshead, uh, right? Yeah. Hogshead, uh, I was just joined Hogshead actually. Did you? So, uh, yeah, I know we spent a bit of time there over the years. That I went with my friends on a golf trip last year, and it's the most incredible place I've been to. Like the hospitality, the hotel, the the way we got looked after. Yeah, it's, it's right like it's right beside Waterville. So I'd finish my trip there, and I'd spend you could spend as much time as you wanted there. But it, Waterville is a lovely little town. It's got a couple of lovely restaurants and pubs and wow the people are great and yeah uh i'll hopefully be spending a bit of time there this summer before the open so i, I guess i was a little surprised we didn't go up towards port rush yeah. i know i know i, I was kind of uh, <laughs> you're thinking like how am i going to get there i'm sure that's if in a perfect world the boys, the boys in hogs head have helicopters they might fly in there there you uh, go <laughs> but um yeah i i would in a per yeah i would i would always go southwest but uh, the next time you come back, I'll send you north. Okay, there you go. And there's Port, we've got, like Port Rush, Royal County Down. 
yeah. Um, even the course, Baltray is there on the way north of Dublin. That's where I won the Irish Open. Oh, wow. Uh, that's okay. A great, that's a very, very underrated golf course. Uh, it's a great golf course. So that's so. your most underrated course in Royal County Downs, just north of that, it looks like. And, uh, man, I, I mean, I could do this all day with you because I've been researching. Uh, it's so funny. What Like, I'm looking at courses now. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great as well. And <laughs> you could go everywhere. You wouldn't. You want to be there for a month. Um, <laughs> but Because, uh, like, there's a course over there on the West Coast called Ennis Grown. Oh, yeah. Which somebody, somebody was asking me recently, what's the, like, course that, you know, not a lot of people would talk about really because you know, people obviously talk about the southwest down in you know waterville and these places and they talk about the north up in port rush and stuff but you know that stretch of golf there in the scrone and ross's point and that place called Carn out and way on the west coast it's not That's, carney Car- no it's not carney it's, it's Carn. <laughs> uh, place called belmuda great little town as well um I, i've seen so, uh yeah. i've seen like flyovers of of uh carn and and a scrony and Rosas yeah. Point, Rosas or Rosas? Rosas. I'm telling you, dude, that little stretch on that northwest corner yeah. is, yeah. it's absurd. But yeah, it just it, like, yeah. it's not I, really that, it didn't look easy to get to, like to me. No, like it's, yeah, the roads, yeah, it might not be the best and it might be a, a tough trip. Uh, but yeah, it, it would be worth it if you did it. Like the golf would be amazing. Like we play, we play, we used to play an amateur tournament, they still play it called the West of Ireland in Rosas Point. Oh really? Um, yeah, like Rory won the West of Ireland. I won the West of Ireland. Porrick won it. Everyone won it. So it was, uh, it's a huge tournament. And man, Harry Diamond actually caddies for Rory won it as Did well. Did he? So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. How old is Harry um, in comparison to uh, you and Rory? I think he's a little bit older. Okay, but he he played around similar time as us as well. Man, this just gets me excited. I, I, I mean, I, I'm very blessed to grow up where I grew up, and um, I feel like I had access to, you know, be able to chase my dreams and, um, for the PGA Tour. But I tell you what, there nothing gets me more excited in this game of golf than than playing in Scotland or playing in Ireland and playing in these just incredible places in the world. And you grew up there. So it, it's, I'm sure when you return home, you just love, love being and, and playing at all of these fun golf courses that you grew up playing. Yeah. And it's funny, like last year was the first year in like forever that I played the Scottish open that I didn't stay in Ireland the week before the open. Mm. And I regretted it. Like I, I actually went to miss the cut of the open for the first time in a few years. So I was like, you know, there's no way I'm doing that this year. This year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out in Ireland, go and play some great golf, and it's something that I just love doing. It's kind of, it's practice and it's playing links golf, but also, you know, you get to play with your friends, and it's kind of puts you in a great frame of mind, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's a great thing to be able to do. And you kind of get into just shot making mode, right? You know, yeah, so exactly, often we're yeah. just technique mode yeah. um, here in the states, and when you when you kind of get over there, you just kind of get lost into playing golf shots. That's it. And, you know, you always get a bit of a win and you have different shots every day. And yeah, it's, uh, there's definitely an art to it. It's not just about swinging the club, but there's an art to playing links golf. Right. And, and Shane, when did you, when did you, um, and, and Charlie, you can go ahead and take, uh, take that map off just so I can get full box on Shane. There we go. Get the full Shane, uh, in, in my box now. <laughs> I've actually got my, I've got my hog's head. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking that. that was hog's head and I should have okay. pointed it out earlier. <laughs> so, when did you move uh, from Ireland? Did you move immediately to the States or was there another stop or two uh, before you got to the United States? Yeah, so I, um, yeah, we got married in 2016 and we had our first daughter in 2017. So like I got my card in the States 2015. Okay. Um, and we we spent a bit of time in America, like early 2016 early sort of we didn't spend early 2017 because she was born early 2017 so I lived in Ireland for a few years while trying to play, play the PJ Tour which that was is one easy. of the most difficult things that is I've not done. easy yeah, it's like I used to do a schedule where I do two weeks on one week off and I mean I was just jet lag for the whole thing and <laughs> it was yeah I struggled and and then um, we start coming here a little bit more frequent. We spend, we used to spend sort of, you know, January to May here mm-hmm. uh, every year, play all, you know, all, all, all that time. We'd always go home after like the 
around the US Open. Yeah. Or no, Wentworth used to be early. So I used to go around around the US Open. It was around that time. Um and then we, we actually moved here full time like two years ago. But we spent like the whole of COVID through here. We spent, you know, we spent a lot of time here. Um mm-hmm. but like full time our daughter started school. She started kindergarten a year and a half ago. So we moved here full time for that. Um and yeah, certainly spending more time here makes it easier on my career. Yeah. Um and it's better like for practice for everything like living in Ireland was great and all but just the weather the practice was just not as good and then you're coming out and you feel like you're playing catch up every week but um, yeah it's been great you know so I've been really kind of based partly here since about 2017 2018 and yeah, it's working out. I didn't realize you and I got on tour right at the same time, or at least the PGA tour, because I got my card in fifteen. So um Yeah, I won I was getting my card. Remember I was getting my card through the basically I didn't have my status, but through like the majors and the world golf yeah. championships. I was I was getting it in twenty fifteen, but the last WGC was in Akron and I went and won that. And that got me oh, a three year exemption. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That, so that's familiar. That, that's, it's a shame yeah. we don't play that golf course anymore either. That was a, oh, that was a, a golf fun course, track. Yeah. yeah. You wanna tell yeah. you wanna talk about um if I would have placed my golf balls where I was in the first round of that tournament when I played it and I hit one fairway that day. Kid, I mean, it's the most stressful punch out golf course in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Long is, rough yeah. in these small trees. I remember you can't when, do I the, when I won the Irish Open in two thousand nine. I got yeah, that got you into the to Akron, and I went there like I just turned pro, and I went there and I shot twenty over par for four rounds, and I was like, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that was one of my lower days. I remember sitting in the hotel room on the Friday night after shooting two seventy eight. The first two days, going, how am I like? how am I going to do this and then like five years later I come back and won so that was pretty unbelievable good. right that's just that golf course is fun I mean I I hit like one or two fairways and shot three or four over and then the next day shot a bunch under hitting like 10 fairways the difference in being in the fairway not in the fairway yeah. on that golf course is like night and day <laughs> yeah yeah I remember yeah it, and it's a hard course to hit fairways uh, oh gosh! The narrow yeah. fairways and the slope. So yeah, it's uh, it's so, a great place. It's a good one. And man, Jupiter is a, an incredible place to practice. You kind of referred to. Uh, let's see, was it was it Medalist and Grove? Is that where you play? Was it? Are those uh, the two Bear, spots? Bears Club, Bears, Bears Club and Grove. Bears Club. And Grove. I mean, right, so Grove is like. I mean, Bears Club's got an amazing short game facility, but the Grove is. I mean, that practice facility is. You just can't beat it. So like when you talk about being you know on top of your game being able to work on your game but also does it does it help you at all to know or at least just to be able to keep your game sharp playing against the best in the world that are out there as well as just kind of seeing how hard other guys are working yeah i was actually just thinking that um before you said it i remember because i remember when i started coming here in like 2016 ish uh i thought i was working hard and i thought i was practicing but then you go to the golf club every day and rory's there before you or you know, JT is always there or, you know, there, there's somebody the the best players in the world are always there and they're mm-hmm. always working hard and they don't take a day off. So it's, uh, yeah, it kind of opened my eyes to, you know, what I needed to do to get better. And, and I think that definitely helped me along the way. One of the days I was recently at the Grove, uh, actually you and you and I had lunch together. I was with Justin and we went out and played that day, but you were doing some ball testing, uh, with Rick's on that day. And, and I found it really interesting because it wasn't just the normal ball testing. This was like ball rollback testing to see exactly what we're working with. And I think it's actually kind of cool that I'm talking with somebody that can give you a little bit of insight into what this golf ball actually looks, feels like, flies like, comparison to what you're playing right now. Yeah, and like I don't think many people have actually tested it. So obviously I was doing some ball testing for the 2024 ball for Shrikson and uh, they brought along five kind of prototypes of what the rollback ball is going to look like. And it was a pretty windy day. It was like, yes, you know, it was probably a... <laughs> It was probably a 15 mile an hour wind, which was like, I played, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. my balls were, they were going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, um, yeah, they had a few, like they had one ball basically that had a different dimple pattern mm-hmm. that basically had the ball, same ball speed, the same spin rates, but it just went 20 hours shorter. Okay. Um, 
So that's fine. That's off driver, but it went 20 yards shorter with irons as well. It just went like, yeah. So 20 yards shorter with iron. Like, is yeah, that, so, is that normalized? Like, is there a way to like, because it's a windy day. I just don't like, was it, no, were these I, numbers? We, this is all on, this is, these are numbers on track, man. So okay. no, maybe it wasn't 20 yards shorter. It was maybe, sorry, it was maybe. So 20 yards with driver. It was about, it was about 8%. Yeah, seven eight percent. What they've kind of um, they've said it's like five to seven yards with irons and only no. Yeah, that's what the USGA and RNA have been saying, but that's not the ball I tested. It was definitely uh, shorter than that, and and that's the that's the thing. I mean, even like you know, we play courses at the start of the year. You know, Tory Pines. Uh, even the North Course of Tory Pines now is a driver mid iron every hole. Um, Get you your know, head covers out. It, yeah, the weather was cold in Phoenix. You know, all of a sudden, every hole feels is that's supposed to be a wedge hole as a driver seven iron. It's uh, so like you, you add in twenty yards off the tee and another ten or fifteen yards with an iron. It's uh, all of a sudden the hole becomes very very long. And um, I I I'm not sure how it's all going to play out. I I think there will be some sort of a rollback, but I don't think it'd be that quite that severe. Mm. Um, but yeah, it certainly was very interesting. Like when. You know, I'd hit, and obviously you look up, and you're expecting your ball to come out in a certain window, and it just doesn't. And you're just like, "Oh my god, this is uh, this is going to be very interesting when it does happen." So, Shane, as it stands now, you know where this golf ball is is set by the USGA and RNA, kind of where they are setting the initial guidelines for these golf ball uh, manufacturers, you know, to to make these golf balls. I mean, for as we kind of grow in this game, you know, the game of golf is growing so much, but would this not just be a, a shot in the heart for like all golfers if they have to go to this type of golf ball? Because it seems like distance is a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I I just think the only thing I think that's wrong, uh, and that's not wrong because I think golf is great and I think the game is great that we play. Um like, I think if they wanted to change it, I don't understand why they just wouldn't make a smaller driver. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the driver is too easy hit at the minute. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to jinx myself the rest of the season now <laughs> and drive it shift. But, um, like, I think, like, if I need to hit a fairway, I hit driver. Yeah. I don't hit my three wood. In fact, I took my three wood out because I don't hit it anymore. Because I'm like, I just hit my driver. And, you know, if I really need to hit a fairway, I hit a three iron or my five wood because I like my five wood. You know, it's kind of like, um, so I just think if you look at guys, if you make the driver head smaller, uh, guys are going to have to use more loft. Like the guys that use eight degrees loft are going to have to use a bit, little bit more mm-hmm. because on a smaller head, it's going to be too little loft. They won't spin it enough, swing. right? Is that, that would be yeah, the problem. Going, yeah, and they're going to have to swing it a little bit easier because, you know, they're going to, the center strikes are they're going to have to be more, you know, careful with center strikes because if you hit it off off the heel or the toe on a smaller face it's not going to go as good so I, I just think that's how I think I don't understand why they just you know you see the tailor made mini driver like why don't they just make the driver that 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 size yeah that, and it seems I simple I think it might fix a lot of problems but who knows it, and you're not the only person to kind of echo that those same comments we had Adam Scott on and he said the exact same thing he he kind of just said you know what the ball is the ball we uh, we don't think that's he didn't really think that's that big of an issue it's just make that thing smaller because when you get nervous that's the one club you're grabbing right now yeah exactly yeah if, if i need to hit a fairway it's give me that driver all day like you know first tee at a Ryder cup first tee the 18 t of a of a major with a power to win you just want to be able to hit your driver and that's it you don't want to be hitting anything else well let's talk Ryder cup and were you did you tee off um, in the alternate no. session, were you on? No. Were, you say you're the I fairway. Was on, uh, I was on evens. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, 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 like, so Sep Sep was your partner, and Sep Strock is a good friend of mine. Birmingham, Alabama, lives ten minutes down the road for me right now, so I can go knock ding dong ditch him right now if you really wanted was, me uh, to. I was on the range on is that a Wednesday or Thursday? I think it was Thursday, and Eduardo Monlari was our stats guy, and uh, I went over to him. I think it was, this was on Wednesday, and I said. Eduardo and I called him over and he came over and I said what you know what way do you see Sepp and I playing the course and he goes the way the way I, I see it is you should play the evens and I just gave him the biggest hug ever <laughs> I was like thank, thank, thank you so much <laughs> so uh, so Sepp had to Sepp had to hit the first tee shot it's funny right so Sepp is like you know Sepp very well yeah. he's like very laid back 
you know, quiet, kind of walks quite slow. Mm-hmm. He didn't really get too flustered with anything. And, and Luke said to me on the Thursday, you know, we're playing a practice round. And Luke said to me, you know, Shane Sepp's a little bit, you know, different to you. He's kind of, you know, not as kind of fiery or not as, you know, a little bit different. So because it's his first one, just be wary of that and kind of stay with him and, you know, don't go marching ahead and just kind of, you know, be with him and look after him for the day. So I was like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, no problem. Cheers, captain. Yeah, whatever. And then we get to the first tee on Friday morning and we're we're on the tee and Sepp's obviously just about to tee off and Victor Hovland, his, his shot comes up on the big screen uh, live on the first tee and he chips in. And I'm like running around the first tee and Seb's, <laughs> Seb's running around the tee after me and he's got to hit his tee shot. And yeah, it was quite funny. And he, he hit it left into the rough, but like, it was, it was fine. Like, um, you know, it's one, it's one of those tee shots. It's, it's a very daunting place to be. So uh, we just laughed at it and kept going. Man. I mean, just, I mean, Rome was incredible, but talk about the build up before Rome, because, you know, you did have to rely on a pick from Luke Donald yeah. and, I tell you what, golf Twitter was in a weird place at that time because everybody, whether it was JT, it's like, how are you going to pick this guy? It's like, wow, I mean, JT's got a pretty dang good record. I could see, I could yeah. see, why wouldn't you? And pick JT him? was one of the Americans' best players that week as well. So I know, kind of and 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 so showed. for you, Shane, like, was it difficult during that time? You know, feeling like you know, I just des- I deserve a pick, but also other people feeling like you know they can go in another direction. Like, was that hard for you at that time? Yeah, thinking? yeah. It was so. I remember the day I got the picks were announced. I obviously got the phone call before mm-hmm. that. But um, look, I I'd be the first to admit I didn't have the best season last year. Um, but I I felt like uh, I was playing at a very high level. Yeah, and that I was finishing sort of twentieth to twenty fifth, fifteenth to twenty fifth mm-hmm. every week. Mm-hmm. And I felt that the level I was playing at PGA Tour majors consistently I felt like it wasn't bad I wasn't missing cuts I wasn't you know I know I didn't make the playoffs uh missed out on those I finished like 76 in the FedEx yeah um but I still felt that I was playing good enough golf my stats you know if I look at it my stats sort of started the year I hit the ball great I put it horrifically from May onwards I put it pretty well mm-hmm. um and I was pretty happy where, where, where that was at um so yeah going back to like the day the team was announced was the Monday and I remember that yeah my phone was just blown up with uh yeah negativity which is wild because it was a weird place for me to be in I just had this great feeling of getting announced on the Ryder Cup team and then you know I had to kind of fend off a a few a lot of tough questions especially you know the Irish Open and Wentworth the two weeks after that so um and I remember thinking (laughs) I remember thinking, like, you know, the way the way it was last year. Let's be honest; it wasn't like you know European players were winning everything that was going. Mm-hmm. We, you know, mm-hmm. we did end up having a, having a great team, but it kind of came together quite late. It did. Um, you know, six months before the Ryder Cup, people were saying, "Where are they going to get twelve players from?" <laughs> um, you know, and and that's the way it was. And uh, you know, obviously, we had Ludwig coming along, and and Nikolai met a charge. Um, I can't even remember who else got the picks, but uh, yeah, it was. It yeah, was I, I was sort of Tommy, single. I, 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 fe- yeah. I felt like I was singled out as the one that got the twelfth pick, which I was kind of a little bit pissed off about as well. Um, but I said to myself, "I'm a big boy. I'm able to handle this. If this takes the heat off one of the rookies uh, going into the into the Ryder Cup, I, I don't really mind. Like I'll, I'll answer the hard questions." And I got the Irish Open. I remember. You know, the journalists were on me a little bit about Moronk not getting picked and, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I, I answered him as well as I could have. Um, yeah. I thought um, I thought what I did in the last Ryder Cup and the few years leading up to it, I thought, yeah, I, I deserve to be picked. And I think I showed, um, I certainly showed behind closed doors why I was picked. Um, I think I showed somewhere on the course I thought I had a pretty good Ryder Cup the way I played. Yeah. Um you know, Sunday, I, I felt like I showed a lot of grit and determination, been three down against Jordan after five holes and coming back, you know, and been one up playing the last. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very proud of myself for that. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't think, even since that, I've seen certain things written in the media 
about certain players. Um, I don't think anybody should be having any arguments with any of Luke's picks considering the way we played. Um, and you just have to look at the first day. Uh, we all made at least half a point on the first day and that's, yep. I don't know if that's ever been done before. Everyone's contributed to the team on the first day and that's, that was incredible. And yeah, very grateful that Luke picked me though. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a big, big kind of honor. And I said it to him on the Sunday evening, you know, he showed his faith in me and, you know, it's a big deal for him being captain. He obviously wants to win really badly, so he is going to pick the twelve players that he thinks is right, and I was one of those. So yeah, I was, yeah, I was pretty happy, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, to be honest, what's driving me on the next, what's driving me on now is the next four years. It's not even the next two years. You know, we got Bet Page and uh, Bet Page next year in twenty five, and then we've got Adair Manor in twenty seven. So uh, <laughs> that that's, gets, that'll get that's you going. That's the reason I get up in the morning now for those, for for that kind of carrot dangling. That that could be that could be a really kind of cool thing to be able to do those two. So um, yeah. So when you when you walked off the green um, on that Friday morning match when you and Sepp got the win, was that just kind of the moment you're like, you know, what, I I deserve to be here? Was that kind of just proving everybody wrong to yourself? Yeah, I mean, I and I remember the, the the week the team was picked in Ireland. I remember I had the chance to win the tournament. I finished third, so I kind of yeah. You know, and then went the following week. Went were the following week. I kind of had a bit of a chance going into the weekend as well. So I was, you know, I felt I felt like I answered a lot of critics in those two weeks. And yeah, to go out on the first morning and get a point on the board with Sepp. And uh, I remember we ha- I had like a twenty five footer on seventeen, and we had two puts for the win. And I left it four feet short, so I was like, uh, not sure Sepp was telling me, but yeah, I remember it's like, there's a lot of relief there, but there's a lot of joy, obviously, as well. And yeah, you feel like yeah, you've contributed to the team and uh, yeah, you definitely feel your work there after after something like that. Uh, can you talk just a little bit about Sepp and what you kind of see in his game and what, what makes him such a good player? Um, He don't really do much wrong, does he? So Sepp is like, you kind of... He stands up, he hits it pretty straight, he hits his iron solid, a little draw, and he chips pretty good, and he holds a few putts. He's kind of, he's one of these players that you're very, very happy to be his foursomes partner, <laughs> I know he was. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, yes. he hits a lot of fairways, he hits a lot of greens. When he misses greens, he's well able to chip, and yeah, he, he rolls the ball well, and he's uh, he's a very laid-back character. He's very, um, he's obviously very driven as well, but he's, uh, you know, he's a great person to be around. Um Myself and him enjoy the same things. We enjoy, we, we both enjoy. Yeah, like, you're both Diet Coke Diet guys. Coke. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, he's uh, all over a little bit different. I feel like we're quite similar as well. So he's uh, he's just a great person to be around. We got to get Coca-Cola to give you two a sponsorship with Diet Coke. I mean, just whether it's getting y'all's golf. That saved me a lot of money. And I've actually got, I've got Porter Carrington staying in my house this week and he's worse than the both of us put together. So <laughs> there'll be a lot of Diet Cokes in my house this week. <laughs> Perfect. And it, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but at the Honda Classic, which is where we're going to be playing this week, actually the Cognizant Classic, I need to start getting that um, yeah. on my TV brain. But didn't you and Sepp have a battle uh, the year that Sepp we won did, and yeah. that you got and on this a downpour, I, right? Yeah, this is all before, but still, it's kind of like y'all had a Sepp, battle yeah, so. uh, when yeah, Sepp yeah. won his uh, first PJ Tour event. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 2022. 22, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a two shot lead with five to play um, and Sepp was the group ahead of me and Sepp birdie three of the last five to beat me by the shot God, but it was I mean, like that's so incredible you, golf. you know that course yeah. like yeah <laughs> I mean two, that, I, what happened uh, I got to the 18th and Sepp had already teed off and, and the big rainstorm came in and Sepp had hit his drive 340 down the middle of the fairway and I hit my drive 247. I mean, it's just bad of the rain. There, so right? it's kind of, yeah. But, and everybody thinks about that, but I'm like, I keep saying to everybody, the worst thing for me was I was two ahead with five to play around that course and I played the last five holes in even par and I didn't even get into a playoff. That's insane. So that's where I felt hard done by, yeah, Sepp just birdie three of the last five and beat me. And this is before I even knew him and, um, yeah, I I didn't like him after that, but uh, <laughs> I got to like him last year. Um, yeah, it was it was a tough one for me, but um, yeah. Well, Shane, you and I have uh, played the Honda Classic together, and it's it's still probably 
you know, I, I have a couple incidents on tour. I mean, I have an alligator incident, but I think probably one of the ones I laugh about the most is you and I playing the Honda Classic together. And, and we have footage that we have got to watch together. <laughs> and I got to get your reaction to what all you remembered. This- <laughs> so this won't be the first time or the last time that this is uh, played this week. Oh, um, gosh, no. <laughs> All right, you can play it, Joey. Here. here we go. Hall today is playing 37 yards shorter than yesterday, so the tour officials giving the players a break. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Uh, I remember that you snapped your seven iron over your knee. Then. ball in the water <laughs> so far today. No. Not happy. Oh, they, they, see the wind. Oh, look. Yes. Well, there you go. That was a clean break. You know how hard it is to snap a club over your knee, by the way, if you're not lost for straight. Um, and then I uh, iced it up and followed you in the water. Shot and... here 15 yesterday, hit it about eight feet. Let's see if we can duplicate that effort. <laughs> trying, to, trying to cut a little seven iron in as well. <laughs> I cut it all right. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much, but. Oh, wow. yes. Apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. At least yours is closer to the green. Were these mics? Uh, did, did our golf balls land on the mics? Because they were so loud. <laughs> you know, do you know the mad thing about that, Smiley? You know, you obviously know this. That that was, that was I think CBS were doing it. No, NBC, that, NBC, NBC, and it was that was their first shot for the show on the broadcast on Sunday. <laughs> and it was like me and Smiley cruising around trying to trying to finish thirtieth. Um, and yeah I, I remember I actually remember about that uh, I remember getting called into the office the oh, following week we both did with, yeah I don't think that happens anymore I don't think you get in trouble for that stuff anymore yeah because there's a dump button you know yeah we don't I, rem- I remember I remember I, I was like getting called into the principal's office and like getting in trouble and getting a slap on the wrist and I remember saying yeah, like I, I thought I got fined or whatever, and I remember saying, "Yeah, I'm sorry, but like I can't promise you that it's not going to happen again." <laughs> See, I was the opposite. I was like the like the goody or the the guy that doesn't want to do wrong as a as a new guy, and I like apologize, and then uh, they still gave me a fine. I was like, "Okay, I'm not apologizing anymore." If I snap yeah. a club over my knee, <laughs> yeah, I remember. It was, you know, the funny thing about that, I remember saying to them. Uh, because we were obviously, I think we were lying, at best, I was lying like 25th, 30th. I think you were doing a little better than yeah, I was. Yeah, I think so. Um, and we were both like, you know, you're thinking around that course, if you finish, I sort of think if you finish one or two under for the last four holes from there, yeah. you might go from 25th to 15th or Easily. 12th. And it ends Easily. up in a half decent week. Um, and yeah, you do that, and then all of a sudden you finish 45th, and it's it's not a very good week, so... <laughs> Uh, I remember trying to explain this to the, the tour at the time, and I was like, yeah, "Whatever." Um, it's funny. It's funny you look back and I, what year was that? Smiley? Uh that was uh, 2016 Honda Classic. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago now. Yeah, you know, I remember um, hitting the shot, and I hadn't hit it in the water all week, and it wasn't. I wasn't necessarily hitting it my best that week. I was kind of getting up and down, not hitting it in the water, and it was you know the fifth. 15th hole on that Sunday had finally hit in the water and I just totally snapped. But then I was so mad and so angry and I'm not even watching you hit it because I know you're not going to hit in the water. Cause like, why would you do that after watching me hitting in the water? <laughs> and so I'm not even watching. And then I hear you say, Oh, you're an idiot. And then you hit. And then I didn't, yeah, then I didn't I know you hit like, in the water. And so I get up yeah. there and your, your caddy puts his bag on the drop zone. I was like, oh, he did it too. I thought you hooked it. I thought you had oh, left. No I no had way. no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways. It, it it's not, it wasn't the first ball I hit in the water. It won't be the last. No, it that's won't. The, that's the funny thing. And yeah. I'm not trying to give you a visual for that. And, and you did mention the TV side of it too. And as somebody that works in the TV business now, it is insane to me that, that sh- those two shots were live. Because most yeah. of the time, these are yeah. these are tape shots. Uh, typically, when we have guys that are way out in front, like you and I were, which are you know we're thirtieth some place, yeah. those are normally things that are cut and then shown later. It's very rare to go live to fifteen for just two random guys that are in the middle of the pack. And even I would I would have argued if I was you because 
they didn't actually see your club break until the <laughs> TV showed the replay of it. I know. I'm going to have to talk to my <laughs> producer about that because he's, yeah. it's the same producer, Tommy Roy, that I work for. And I guarantee you, he was like, roll that. We're going to roll that one because we're going to show it from every <laughs> angle, which is whatever. It makes for good TV. Yeah. I was the idiot that did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's man. why, uh, yeah. That's why when you see yourself on on PGA Tour live, you're like, oh, I better uh, <laughs> better watch myself today. <laughs> good times, man. Good times, and uh, I'll be down there this week, and uh, hopefully, I get to watch you on 15. I'm not, get, and I'm I'm hopefully going to be calling four I birdie. Hopefully, hopefully, I won't see it because the only thing I'll think about is like slicing <laughs> a seven iron in the water. <laughs> I'll be yeah. living over in the grandstand. Oh man. Well, Shane, this has been a fun combo, man. I know uh, it's been a busy weekend for you with uh being on dad duty. So I I know that you're ready to get to get to some uh, some much needed rest and recovery as you get ready for a uh again another cognizant open that that you've won before and I'm sure you're excited to get going this week. Yeah, I'm I'm very yeah, looking forward to it. This is one of my uh, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Actually, the, the golf course—I love the golf course, and I seem to play pretty well. I get to stay at home. I, I have Paul Carrington and his caddy Ronan uh, staying with me for the week, so it's good fun. And yeah, we'll we'll have a good time and hopefully play some good golf. And I'll mention this just as we as we get out. You know, we just had Jake Knapp on the on the podcast, and of course, he wins in Mexico. So I'm just saying, there's something in the water, Shane. Something in the water. So- I'll send you. Uh, <laughs> Good few pints again in Ireland, if that's the case. There well, you go. There we you, go. Won't, you won't have to pay for a drink in Ireland when you're there, if we'll, that's the case. We'll call, it, we'll call it a wash. We'll call it a wash on the Guinnesses. So that sounds good to me. Yeah. Shane, play well this week. I look forward to seeing you out there. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Marty. I've actually watched a couple of episodes of, of, of y'all earlier, and uh, you guys have some good takes. So thanks for, uh, thanks for what you guys do. It's cool to see what you guys are doing. And uh, I, I know golf fans appreciate it, but we, we do too. So please keep it up. I think you're doing a tremendous job. And, and you know, I listen to this podcast. It's really cool. And-